All right, so hello everyone. My name is Zara Emmett. I am a PhD student in the Space Rendezvous Lab at Stanford, advised by Professor Simone D'Amico. Um, and today I'm going to be presenting on a new data set that we're introducing for autonomous vision based navigation. Um, this work was completed at Stanford with one of my peers, Jeff Park, as well as a team at MathWorks, a few of whom are going to be at the conference, and so I'll introduce them as well. All right, so we are seeing a massive growth in the number of objects that we have in low Earth orbit. And so this unprecedented growth is giving rise to, you know, an increased importance in technologies related to rendezvous proximity ops and docking for applications such as space debris removal, um, as well as, you know, in space refueling. And kind of core to all of these technologies is the ability to navigate safely and autonomously about a non-cooperative target. And so before an autonomous servicer can, you know, generate an approach trajectory, you need to be able to estimate the position and orientation or the pose of your target. And so one way to do this is using a monocular camera to, to, to determine the pose of that target from either a single or series of images. And monocular pose estimation is kind of an alternative to technology such as LIDAR or stereo vision. And it has the advantage that the, the camera itself is you know, low size, weight, power, and cost as well. It gives you the ability to have sensor redundancy on board. And so within monocular pose estimation, there's kind of some traditional computer vision techniques as well as um, some more machine learning approaches. And so for traditional computer vision, we typically think about feature mapping. So, you know, taking known features from a 3D model and then being able to map those to a 2D image. And this can be a little bit computationally expensive to initialize the algorithms. And then it also is you know, costly to hand engineer those features on the 3D model. Um, and they've been shown that sometimes they can lack robustness depending on illumination conditions. Um, and so machine learning has been increasingly explored as an alternative to some of these traditional computer vision techniques in various domains. So you can think autonomous driving, robotics, biomedical applications, and it's beginning to gain traction in the domain of spacecraft pose estimation. But as we'll talk about in a second, the, the biggest challenge to implementing these algorithms in space is a lack of data. And so, yeah, so the main barrier to implementing machine learning algorithms is that they're very data hungry. So you need a lot of data to train a generalized machine learning algorithm. And specifically, when we talk about space applications, space-borne imagery is prohibitively expensive to acquire. So it's going to drive a need for synthetic images, um, either synthetic as in fully rendered, or you can also improve it to have, you know, hardware in the loop imagery from a test bed. And so the Space Rendezvous Lab actually kind of pioneered this effort with the first uh, space synthetic spaceborne data set in 2019. And since then, we've seen you know some additions both by Slab as well as kind of the larger community. Um, however, you know when we talk about having these synthetic data sets, we are still kind of trailing behind fields such as autonomy, where machine learning is becoming more popular. So if we look at you know the Berkeley Deep Drive data set. This data set alone has more image, you know, has more data than all of these spaceborne applications that I'm showing combined. And so there's still room for larger and more diverse data sets. And then the other kind of caveat here is that up until recently, most of the machine learning applications have been centered kind of in academia and research, and the licenses for these data sets reflect that. And so now that we're seeing kind of this immense growth in space technology, there's more of a commercial interest and investment in looking into machine learning applications. And so, you know, we can see that there's still kind of a need for comprehensive and commercially available machine learning data sets to keep pace with the, uh, the unprecedented growth that we're seeing in uh, space technology. So this brings us to kind of one of the main contributions of this data set, which is Speed UE Cubed. Um, so it's built off of some of the previous data sets that we've created in Slab, so the um, spacecraft pose estimation data set. Um, but we are using Unreal Engine as our renderer, and our target is a 3U CubeSat. And we have two subsets within this data set. So we have a training data set that includes 30,000 randomized images, which we've then further segmented into an 80% training and 20% validation split. And then we have a trajectory data set which includes um, around 1,100 sequential images that model a rendezvous trajectory. 
And again, so the, the target in these images is a 3U CubeSat. Um, our rendering engine is Unreal Engine 5. And then kind of um, alluding to what we just discussed, the license for this data set is such that it can be used commercially as well. So diving in a little bit deeper to kind of the aspects of this data set. So we are using a three CubeSat model um, that was designed in-house by MathWorks. And this is also kind of in the, the spirit of not getting stuck with copyright and permission issues in terms of using a publicly available model. So we were able to design a generalized 3U CubeSat that includes a lot of the features that we typically see. Um, and a few to point out here is, you know, the two extended solar panels that are typical of, of CubeSats, as well as these three antennas, which are kind of the main source of asymmetry in the, in the model. And that's important because that makes it so that this is kind of a representative model for a machine learning data set, but it's also quite challenging because of how symmetric it is. All right, so talking about those pose labels. Um, so the, the general methodology for creating this data set is to first generate the 30,000 um, randomized pose labels that we can then use to render using Unreal Engine. And so um, the first distinction is here is that amongst that 30,000 labels, half of them are with Earth in the background, and then half of them are with uh, Earth outside of the background, and you can see this here in this plot. So Z is going to be along the camera bore site, so you can kind of see the, the camera model in here, and we can see that there's a high density, which is about half of the, the images in with Earth in the background, um, and then half without. And the, uh, the main thing here is that we have modeled, you know, put limits on the inner spacecraft separation to be between 1.5 meters and 15 meters, um, and that's kind of based based on what a traditional like or a typical terminal art rendezvous proximity op um, phase would be in terms of this the separation. And then for camera altitude, we've modeled between 700 kilometers, so in low, low Earth orbit, all the way out to geostationary. And then a few things that we did, um, putting restrictions on the labels themselves, such that we have images that are still illuminated and useful for a pose estimation algorithm is that we have uh, set the angle between the, the vector from the Earth to the camera and the Earth to the sun, such that it's not larger than 60 degrees. And this is so that the sun is always illuminating the CubeSat in the images. Um, and then we have the angle between the camera bore site and the vector from the camera to the sun can't be smaller than 75 degrees. And this is so that the sun is always outside of the field of view of the camera. All right, so taking those 30,000 labels that we've generated, um, we have used Unreal Engine 5 as our renderer. So Unreal Engine, it's a physically based gaming engine, physically based just meaning that it tries to render the images in a way that models the lights and surfaces following you know, the laws of optics. And um, the way this works is you can create a scene in Unreal Engine with actors. So this is kind of a screenshot from the editor itself that shows our camera actor, our target, our, the earth, and then the directional light that we're using as the sun. And we can move the actors around in this scene to, to capture the images. Um, so a few things here, yeah, so our actors, the main actors we're looking at are the earth, the sun, the CubeSat model, and the, the service or spacecraft, which is the camera. Um, we've included some realistic textures. So we have from the NASA Blue Marble Collection, we have the earth texture, we have the clouds. Um, and this is, again, to increase the realism of the imagery. Um, and then the other thing to mention here is that within Unreal Engine, we've applied some post-processing to, again, mimic a little bit more realistic camera effects. So we have random film grain noise, we have chromatic aberrations in Vignette, and so that's all in the effort of making sure that this data set is actually useful for eventually real space applications. And so just to kind of illustrate some of the diversity that we have in this data set. So these are four sample images from the training data set. And they show, you know, again, half of them have Earth in the background, which is those what those top two will look like, and then half of them don't. So we have kind of a, a darker background for these bottom images. Um, and it also kind of shows the variation in the spacecraft separation. So for this top one, we have a much larger, or this top right one, we have a much larger spacecraft separation than obviously the bottom left. 
Um, all right. So once we generated this training data set, we wanted to uh, evaluate its performance using kind of typical pose estimation convolutional neural networks that we previously developed in SLAB. And so to be clear about the objectives of this analysis that I'm about to share, we aren't necessarily interested in developing the developing a new high performance CNN specifically for this data set. The purpose of this analysis was just to establish how a CNN performs using this new data set that we're introducing as compared to speed, which is uh, a similar well-established data set, as well as we want to be able to identify any unacceptable outliers that we needed to remove from the data set. And when I say unacceptable outliers, I mean any images where the CubeSat is completely occluded as opposed to um, an acceptable outlier where it's, it's difficult to identify the CubeSat, but it's still important to retain it in the data set to challenge any algorithm that you're testing. So using the object detection network, key point regression network pipeline that we've shown here on the left, this was originally, originally introduced by, um, by Jeff Park in 2019. And so we took this pipeline and we implemented it in MATLAB. The, the main reason for taking it from Python where it was originally implemented and kind of re-implementing it in MATLAB is towards being able to have a full simulation capability in like a MATLAB simulink environment. And so just a few changes that we made here is that for the object detection network, instead of using YOLO v3 as shown in the image, we switched this to YOLO v4. Um, and the main steps here are that the, you know, based on, on the previous slide, I showed the 11 key points that we've identified for this CubeSat. We put the, uh, the images through an object detection network, which outputs kind of this bounding box the bounding box we can use to crop and resize our image. And it then goes through the key point regression network, which directly regresses those 11 key points that we established earlier. And then using a perspective and point algorithm, we can convert those key points into a, a 60 pose of the satellite. So I've shown the wireframe that's reprojected onto this satellite, indicating what the predicted pose was. So establishing some of the metrics that we're looking at here, so we have intersection over union, which is uh, giving you an assessment of how good your object detection network is in terms of the predicting bounding box, predicted bounding box versus the ground truth. And then we have a translation error, a rotation error, and then their corresponding normalized errors. And so we've normalized these errors to uh, account for the difference in the size between the Tango spacecraft in the speed data set and the cube set that we're using for speed UE cubed. And the main takeaway here is actually the fact that we see a much higher standard deviation in the translation and rotation errors, even once we've normalized for the size of the spacecraft and particularly for the rotation error. And so if we took a deep, if we take a deeper look into what all of these predicted um, poses look like and where those rotation or where those errors are coming from, we see that for speed UE cubed, we just you know, we have left, we have translation error on the right, we have orientation error, um, and we see a much higher occurrence of, of outliers here in the orientation error for speed UE cubed versus original speed. And so we want to be able to differentiate if that poor performance is due to the robustness of the algorithm that we're using, or if it's more inherent to the data set. So to do this, we added in another architecture, which is the spacecraft pose estimation um, algorithm that, again, Jeff Park developed in 2023. Um, and the idea here is that we are instead using a heat map to detect those key points instead of directly regressing them. And so we can see that we see an improvement um, as in a reduction in the standard, devi standard deviation of the errors between uh, ODN KRN and SPNV2. And this is good because we want to create a data set that is challenging, right? Challenging enough that it requires a performant algorithm as opposed to a, a data set that any neural network architecture could perform well on. And so we want it to be responsive to the choice of architecture. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. But, you know, just as a final check, we can take a look at some of what those worst performing outlier cases were to make sure that we actually are able to identify the CubeSat visually. I don't know if you can actually visualize it from, from these images, but 
if these are the six worst performing images from Speed GUI Cubed when evaluated on SPN V2, um, and we can see that you can still see satellite edges or the antennas in all of these. And so for that reason, we actually ended up retaining them in the data set as challenging cases. All right, and then moving on to the trajectory data set. So for the trajectory data set, or for the training data set, we have these randomized single images that are diversified in order to hopefully have a robust neural network that's trained on them. However, in reality, when we're kind of developing these pose estimation algorithms, we're designing them for sequential data. And so it's important to then be able to test your algorithms on sequential trajectory images. And so to do this, we first developed this rendezvous um, proximity operations and docking open loop simulation framework. And the, the blocks here kind of mimic the general process that we use to create the training data set, but we formalized it in this framework that we're going to use to create the trajectory. So we can propagate our spacecraft dynamics and use that to determine our ground truth labels. That goes into our renderer, which in this case is Unreal Engine. The rendered image is fed into our pose estimation neural network, and then we can calculate our error and keep going. So for the trajectory data set, um, we are going to use it. We used a similar uh, trajectory as for the shirt data set, which again was developed in Slab. Um, the main difference here is that we have modified the inclination for the, the absolute orbit of the uh, servicer spacecraft, spacecraft to be around 67 degrees. And this is so that the, the vector from the Earth to the Sun is, is normal to the orbit plane and we can have constant illumination for the CubeSat. Um, and then we're also showing the the mean uh, or the quasi non singular uh, relative orbital elements for the uh, for the target spacecraft here, um, which puts it in an EI vector separated passively safe orbit. And we simulated this trajectory for one orbit, taking measurements at every five seconds, which is what gives us that around eleven hundred images. Um, and and the last thing here is that we did not propagate the attitude of the target spacecraft, we manually fixed it to point at the CubeSat so that the image is always centered on the, the target. And so we can see this is what that trajectory looks like when all of the images are put together. Um, so the main things here is that we can see that the target spacecraft is tumbling in this orbit. And the other thing to point out here is that as compared to the training data set, we see a larger proportion of this of the images in this data set are without Earth in the background and where, you know, because the target is tumbling, you have a lot of images where you're just kind of seeing it edge on, which are going to be some of those more challenging cases. And so again, evaluating it on those two same architectures, we can see that it performs very similarly. We do have a higher occurrence of rotation errors. We think that's, again, likely due to the fact that we have more of those darker images where you're seeing it just edge on. Um, and the main takeaway here is, again, that we see kind of similar trends that we saw for the training data set, which is that, you know, we see an increased performance for SPN V2, um, but we still have kind of a higher outlier occurrence rate. And so these plots show as a function of the time what those uh, errors look like both for translation at the top divided into components and then orientation at the bottom divided into components. All right, so to summarize, uh, we've introduced SpeedUE Cubed. It's a new Unreal Engine-based spacecraft pose estimation data set of a 3U CubeSat. Um, it's divided into a training subset as well as a trajectory subset. Um, and for the trajectory subset, we've also introduced a RPOD simulation framework that can be used to train the pose estimation uh, neural network online. Um, and the key takeaways here is that we see that we kind of contain more challenging outliers as compared to speed, but uh, that this just means that it's, you know, a slightly more challenging data set, which adds diversity to, to the field. Um, and then again, the main takeaway here is that speed UE cubed is avail available for commercial use, and this is going to help facilitate some development uh, for, for machine learning algorithms. And then finally, so future work. So taking this RPOD framework that we've introduced, we're, you know, I mentioned, maybe I didn't mention, I should mention that our Unreal Engine interface is using a C++ API. Um, their MathWorks is in a future release going to be introducing a Simulink based 
interface. And so once that is available, we can take this entire framework and implement it fully in Simulink, which will allow us to do more continuous evaluation as opposed to having to generate all of the labels beforehand. Um, so that's kind of our first step. Then you can imagine we can actually go ahead and close this loop by adding in a navigation filter, adding in a controller, um, and yeah, contr uh, closing the loop for this framework. And then finally, kind of similar to what we've done in the past, we can go ahead and introduce our, our test bed for rendezvous and optical navigation that we have over at the Space Rendezvous Lab um, and introduce hardware in the loop. So taking out the synthetically rendered uh, aspect and adding in hardware in the loop. And then these will be the links to everything. And yeah, happy to take any questions. Ah.